Hello, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Henry Zhang. I'm from uh, VMware China. I'm based in Beijing. I'm happy to be here to deliver this talk about uh, federated learning and unlocking the values of distributed data for enterprises. Um, I have, should, should have another speaker, uh, Lane Pang, but unfortunately he didn't get a, a visa to enter Canada, so I will be the only presenter today for this talk. Um, just a little bit background about us. Uh, so I'm uh, working in uh, Octo of the VMware R&D. Uh, I'm currently the director leading a few efforts, uh, mostly open source projects. Uh, I'm currently the TSC board member of the uh, FATE open source project and also uh, the creator of, of, uh, and maintainer of open source project Harbor and CNCF graduated project. And I wrote a few books on uh, Harbor authoritative guides and the blockchain technical guides. And also Lam Peng is a staff engineer uh, in, also in Octo VMware. And he's a TSC board member of the open source project OpenFL and a maintainer of FATE. Um, so we did a lot of uh, federated learning and open source projects. So today we'll go through some of the key points there as well as giving some of the thinking on the recent uh, privacy protection and the, uh, and the uh, data protection and all kinds of stuff, as, as well as the large language model that we did use by using the federated learning uh, technology. So first thing first, uh, what is uh, federated learning? I'll just give a quick uh, concept, a quick intro of the concept. Um, so the idea of federated learning actually came from Google uh, back in 2017. Uh, when they're trying to improve the user input method of the uh, mobile devices. Uh, they want to predict uh, what the user will input uh, as the next word. Um, so they use federated learning by uh, some computation of different devices uh, or different users. And then they collect those data. They use those data to do a distributed uh, training and then we run a globally and, and aggregate it and have a globally optimized model and send back to every devices. So all of the, every device will eventually have a optimized model that can predict the next word uh, of the input method. That's originally the idea that came from the mobile device. And later on, um, the idea has been used in different areas. Um, so according to, uh, this is from the more formal definition of formal uh, description from the Wikipedia is that uh, federated learning, basically uh, we can have a central server that can send out the data uh, to different uh, uh, places uh, and then uh, send out the model to different places as the initiation of the model. And then each of the devices will have their local training uh, using the data uh, locally and doing some computation. And then after a certain round, the data will be aggregated into the central server to form a combined uh, optimized model uh, for, the, uh, for the overall uh, clients. And then eventually this uh, optimized model will be sent back uh, to each of the devices and then uh, repeat the step uh, two, three, four, and then, uh, one, one, two, three, four, and then it will become a globally optimized uh, model eventually uh, after the convergence. So let's uh, give this uh, 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 animation for some illustration of, of the idea. So federated learning can be think of as a paradigm shift of moving the data, uh, moving the compute to data. So on, on this uh, animation, we can see that, um, uh, we can see the ship here. Uh, if we want to raise this ship, uh, we need to feed them with the uh, grass from different grasslands. So here you can see that uh, the, the grass are actually the grass need to move out of the grassland and to put into a place for the, to feed the ship. So if we think of the ship as a model uh, that we want to train, um, then the grass can be as, as a data that we are, use, uh, we are using to train the model and the grassland as the organizations that own the data. You can see here that each of the organization need to bring their data or the grass to the ship, uh, to the model, feed the model, and then gradually growing uh, the ship. So in this way, the ship is gradually going, and eventually uh, we get something uh, useful uh, as the model. So the, in this paradigm, we can see that it's just the model uh, does not move, uh, but the data actually moves. We call that the moving the data to the compute. So obviously, we can see that the grass needs to be moved out of the grassland. If the, if it, if the grass is data, that means that the data needs to go out the boundary 
of the organization. That means we obviously you can think of it as some of the concern about leaking the data, leaking the privacy of the, or uh, leaking the in privacy information. So people are thinking this is not a good way to do the, the, the training. So they're doing it in another way, or, or the other way around is that moving the compute to the data. So uh, on the illustration, in the animation on the right hand side, you can see that the ship actually is going to different uh, grassland to eat the grass. And the grass will never go out of the boundary of the grassland. It always stay inside the grassland. So in this way, um, the grass will never go out and then keeping the data inside the organization and remove the, the risk of leaking the data out of the, uh, the, 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 the organization. So in this way, uh, the ship can always can, can still uh, be grown. And then just that they, uh, the ship can just uh, uh, need to move to the different locations to eat the, uh, eat the, eat the grass. So we call this a data um, moving to the, uh, so the, the, the ship, the model moving to the data and the data does not move. So this is the idea of federated learning by changing the uh, original or the, or the traditional paradigm of uh, moving data to compute by moving the, uh, the, the computer data. So um, there are two reasons behind the federated learning. One is to preserve the data privacy and confidentiality uh, of the data. The other is to reduce the communication cost for doing the, uh, the training. So suppose we want to move the, uh, the data to a central place to train that it's very hard because the, there's a large amount of data to be transmitted. So in that sense that um, the data need to stay locally uh, for, the, for, the trans, uh, for, the, for the computation. So most of the two, two reasons behind any federated learning. So as uh, we talk, I talked about uh, just now, uh, federating for originally was designed for devices uh, distributed, to, distributed everywhere um, so that they can provide data, local use of local data to train a global model. Um, later on, this technique has been uh, used in enterprise, in data center, uh, to, or multiple clouds to, in order to uh, do federated learning for, uh, by utilizing the data in different clouds or locations and places. So hence, the, the federated link can also be used in the enterprise setup. So suppose for the federated learning can be used inside an enterprise. So, uh, and this enterprise has uh, multiple locations of data. Uh, for example, uh, in multiple clouds or in uh, different geographic locations, or in some cases, for example, uh, they may have uh, look, data in locations in different countries, especially for any multinational company they may have data everywhere in every country. Um, but usually the data from different countries, they have uh, some laws and regulations that prevent data being sent out of the country so that they need to have local computation in, inside that country. And then after they perform the computation or the training, they eventually can aggregate the data or, or, or the parameter uh, or, or, the, or the gradients of the, of the model and collectively uh, into a central place for, have to form a global model. Uh, that's the, how we think that this federated learning can be used by an enterprise. Um, the other uh, way is to multiple enterprise can actually form a federations, uh, form federation that they can uh, use that federation to uh, train a model. Uh, that means they cross the organization boundary, they collaborate with different uh, organization, cross their location and, and devices and so on. So in, that, in, in, this, in this setup, uh, the federated learning will have um, much uh, uh, sec uh, much requirement, uh, much uh, requ uh, level, higher level of requirement of the security. So usually the data here is uh, encrypted, uh, or, or not the data, the, the parameter or the gradients of, of the model is, is encrypted. There are generally three kinds of uh, federated learning, uh, three categories of federated learning right now. The first one is called uh, horizontal federated learning, which means that uh, the data coming from different parties, um, they share the same feature space, but with different samples. Uh, for example, two banks, uh, they may have different users, um, but same features. The data of different users, but they have the same features. Uh, feature, I mean the dimension of the data of the user, uh, such as each of the user may have uh, credit, credit score, history, uh, age, occupation, income, and so on. So if from a traditional um, 
relational database uh, point of view, um, these data can be think of as aggregated by uh, in, on a row by row basis. That means the horizontal federated learning. That means all the data can be uh, thought of as aggregated uh, on a, a, like a row of the data. Uh, in con contrast, there's another way of federated learning. It's called vertical federated learning, where the data from different parties, uh, they share the same samples, but with different feature space. Uh, that means that, for example, a bank and uh, another uh, company like energy or e-commerce company, they may share the same user, but the user's data or the dimension of that user in different companies, they are quite different. For example, the data in a bank of a user of a particular user, they may have credit scores, but in another company like energy company, the same, same person, um, they may have different uh, data like usage data, uh, uh, service purchase data, and so on. So by the sense, by combining the data, or not by, by using the data together, we can have a more, um, more dimensional data of that user profile. And then based on that kind of data, we can train a more accurate model uh, for use in, the, in our capital applications. So in a, a relational database point of view, um, this kind of uh, virtually can be thought of as uh, joining the data vertically or by column. Uh, that means that, uh, so this called the name, uh, this have, we have the name vertical federated learning. Um, the last is just the uh, federated transfer learning, which that one of the data set, uh, they may not have the label. So we need some transfer learning technology to uh, create a label in order to have the uh, federated learning. So these are the three types of, uh, uh, three types of federated learning that are used. In uh, most likely, uh, people will start, can start with the horizontal federated learning, uh, having the same uh, dimension or same structure of the data, and vertical can be used to a complementary uh, data set uh, from different uh, vertical. So uh, we can see the federated learning we require a lot of uh, uh, technology techniques to use. So normally we can just start from any uh, existing. Uh, federated learning frameworks, uh, mostly uh, like open source projects that are available like in the, currently uh, in, in the FAI and Data Foundation. We have uh, open source project called FATE, uh, Substrate, and OpenFL. They are all the open source projects that are related to uh, federated learning. Yeah, they provide different functions and, and also uh, have the different uh, uh, user scenarios. Uh, so our team actually uh, participate, had participated in two of the projects, uh, FATE and OpenFL. Uh, so I'm going to introduce a bit about how they can help us to uh, do the um, federated learning. The first one uh, is called FATE, uh, uh, F-A-T-E. Uh, it's called uh, Federated um, AI Technology Enabler. Uh, it was, uh, uh, currently it's hosted under Linux uh, LS AI and Data Foundation. Uh, right now we have a very large community uh, after 4,000 plus engineers and developers, and uh, 4,900 4, plus uh, GitHub stars, and also uh, about, about 20, uh, 200K line of code, and so on. Um, so this is the first uh, open source community of federated learning in the world, and provide the industry grade uh, uh, platform for, uh, for the privacy computing, and also the federated learning for developers and contributors. Here's the path of the development of the projects. Um, it was first open source uh, back in 2019, uh, February, um, roughly four year, more than four years ago. Uh, and it was donated to Linux Foundation uh, in 2019, uh, June, uh, June 2019. Uh, it was uh, originally developed by uh, WeBank in China, uh, and then uh, later on donated in the June of uh, 19, 20, 2019. Uh, and after that, you can see that there are more than uh, 40 releases uh, in, in, in this open source project. And most recently, uh, we have the 1.10 and also the 1 point, uh, of the 2.0 uh, for the interoperability of different uh, federated learning systems. And just last month, uh, we, we released a feature, it's called the FATE LLM, uh, Large Language Model. Uh, this is also helping people to build up uh, uh, large language model fine tuning using federated data. I'll talk about it a little bit uh, because it's uh, very people, many people are, uh, uh, have great interest in this LM area recently. 
Um, here just the, some of the data that from the uh, Linux Foundation. Uh, we have the computer account contributor strength you can see here. Uh, we grown the uh, contributor size by uh, more than uh, 200 and 18 percent uh, in the last three years. And the, in terms of the commits, uh, we grown it like uh, uh, 254 percent uh, in the last three years. So can you, you can see there's a lot of adoption and, and, and contributor and participants in these projects. Um, here's the, uh, the framework or, or the, or the, or the, of, of these failed projects. So underlying, you can see the uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch as the deep learning framework uh, supported. And also we have the compute engine of the Acro and Spark uh, for the distributed computing frameworks. So if you want to perform local training, um, then you can leverage all these technology, uh, all open source, uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Spark, and so on, uh, just to build up your local training capabilities. And then we have the multi-party federated communication layer uh, that help us to, uh, for the, to, to, to perform the task of the federated uh, communication. And we have built up in building uh, six kind of uh, secure protocols, like the, the paleo, the hom uh, half uh, homomorphic encryption, uh, secure sharing uh, MPC, uh, obli oblivious uh, transfer, uh, secure aggregation, and so on. So this will be the foundation layer for the, uh, the underlying security uh, protocols that are implemented in uh, Project FATE. And then on top, on top of it, we have about 30 plus uh, built-in algorithm uh, for different uh, federated learning scenarios, like the uh, vertical FL and horizontal FL, and also federated deep learning. Uh, basically, it it can just, uh, user can just use it uh, out of the box uh, by using something like the uh, linear regression, decision tree, uh, or any CNN or deep, deep learning stuff that can direct you out of, the, you out of the box. And on top of that, we have the different repos uh, on GitHub uh, that actually can combine all these uh, underlying layers to, to build some uh, useful, uh, use, usable uh, uh, tools for the, for the users. Uh, like the uh, Faithflow, it's a pipeline management uh, framework uh, that help people to doing the DAC uh, uh, parsing and helping defining the, the, the pipeline of the training and then uh, perform the, eventually perform the federated learning jobs. And the other one is called KubeFate, uh, which is a cloud native uh, operational tools for operating a cloud native federated learning platform using technology like Kubernetes, uh, clouds and multi-clouds and so on. And then we have Fabor for the visualization of different models. So during the training, we, we can monitor the progress and also see the results of, or see the logs of, the, of this training. It's called Fabor uh, for, the, uh, for, for this uh, federal learning uh, uh, framework. And we have the uh, Fed LCM, uh, federal learning uh, lifecycle management uh, for multi-cloud setup. So basically, it's for the federation management instead of a local uh, site uh, management. And then also we have phase serving, uh, which is uh, help people to serve their federated model uh, using this tool uh, for online inferencing, model management, and model monitoring, and so on. So these are the basic key features of uh, FATE framework. And most recently, we are building up a feature called FATE-LLM. Uh, it's called Federated Large Languages Model. Um, right now, we have planning a few uh, modules, like the different hubs, like Communication Efficient Hub, uh, Fed LLM Model Hub, and also the Fed LLM uh, Protection and Evaluation Hub. Um, so uh, right now, the blue, blue boxes are representing the, the, the module that has already been done. And the uh, gray ones are uh, being, will be done, and uh, they are on the roadmap soon. Uh, we're going to release one, one version uh, this month in May. Uh, to be more, uh, uh, to, be, to, to have, to can contain, to can handle uh, larger models. Right now, you can, we can only have BERT and GPT-2. It's not a very large model, but in the roadmap, we will have GPT-J, uh, LAMA, and ChatGLM, uh, uh, Dash 130B, and so on. All those are the lo large models that we aim to provide uh, to the users. Um, so this is the, uh, the latest uh, uh, feature or latest update for the LLM. Uh, to address for the need uh, for the industry or the users that have the weight for uh, training the large language model uh, 
using local data uh, from, di from different parties. And the idea is that uh, we have the models uh, from, uh, for example, some pre-built model, pre-trained model like BERT, GBT2, uh, GRMS, whatever, uh, and, and LAMA, whatever, and as the starting point of each of the party. And then we perform the fine tuning uh, uh, on this each of the party. Uh, we call it the distributed uh, fine tuning for the, for, the, for the LLM. And then using the organization's local data. Nobody was sharing the data, but they're using the data for uh, fine tuning. Eventually, we have a trained, federated large language model, eventually, that will help us to, uh, to be used uh, across the, uh, the different locations. So here's one of the uh, adapter way for the fine tuning. So adapter is one of the approach to fine tune a large language model, or actually any, any uh, pre-trained model, a foundation model. Um, so here we have we adopt a, 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 a approach called uh, auto fat L NLP. Uh, here you can see that uh, on the left hand side we can see the diagram for the most of the uh, pre-trained and fine tuning uh, stuff. Uh, so this is uh, uh, normal to all the uh, AI, AI people. Uh, first, you have a pre-trained model uh, as in use it as a foundation model, and then once you get a foundation model, you can fine tune it. Uh, you, to be for a different purpose of tasks uh, or the downstream task. Uh, and then you can serve the downstream task uh, for, the, for your application. Um, for the fine tuning, because for this fine tuning, usually you need to train the whole model, which is consume a lot of uh, resources. Uh, it's almost hard for uh, a normal, it's very hard for a general uh, uh, organization. So we have another way we'll called efficient parameter fine tuning. Uh, which is just the adapter here. Uh, it's a very lightweight layers uh, inserted into the original network. Uh, we call adapters. And then use that to only tune the adapters to achieve the final result of the fine tuning. That will reduce the, uh, reduce the uh, parameters and as well as the time and resource used or required by, by the fine tuning. That's a lot of improvement. Uh, according to the data from our FAIT uh, community, uh, we have about uh, uh, the parameter have been reduced to about one, one to ten percent, right, roughly, uh, and the uh, and the time for the training actually uh, reduced to uh, about twenty percent uh, for the for the fine tuning. So you can see there's you can see there's a lot of saving in the training in terms of the training of the uh, uh, federated learning uh, by using the adapter. Here's the fade LLM uh, for the high level architecture. Uh, basically, you can see that. Um, on the left-hand side, just like the hardware layer, uh, CPU, GPU, FPGA, whatever. Uh, and then we have Kubernetes on top of it uh, for management of the cluster and the hardware resource. Uh, and then we have the distributed runtime called like Agro and Spark uh, to run on top of it and using the underlying uh, uh, hardware. Um, and then uh, on top of that, we have our open source project called QFate, uh, which will manage the single instance of the uh, federal learning cluster. And then the yellow two boxes uh, are the most recently uh, FATE LLM, uh, which stuff, uh, which will, on top of the existing QFA and, and the other, other stuff, uh, that will help us to uh, do the fine tuning of the large language model in a federated learning way. Uh, and, and then uh, this uh, purple one just uh, exchange, uh, originally we have the OSX uh, open site exchange uh, server for, uh, for coordinating different parties for the training. And the FED LCM is a management tool uh, for the different uh, parties uh, in, inside the federation. Uh, this is how the uh, FED LLM uh, projects works. Uh, we just released uh, the point 1.0, and we have 2.0 uh, re most recently uh, in, this, in, this May, in, this, in this month, and maybe the next release in, 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 in August. So having talked about the uh, federal learning uh, in the, uh, the FED, uh, we now we move to another one, uh, OpenFL, uh, we, we are working on. Uh, OpenFL is mostly for the horizontal uh, federated learning. Uh, FATE just now is that they can support well for the vertical federated learning, while the, uh, uh, the horizontal one, uh, we, we think that OpenFL may did a better job. So in, in a way, it's more simpler as, as uh, lightweight. So like right now in the OpenFL, we can see that uh, basically the two nodes here, uh, node one and node three, and then we have a node called the aggregator here in the, in the middle um, as the coordinator. So 
the first step is that the, the collaborator here, uh, the collaborator will actually will uh, is a client that the federation can access a local training, has, a, has access of local data, and then uh, it, it can uh, have the perform some tasks. You can consider it as the client of, of each in, in the federate in the federation. And the aggregator is a we can think of it as a parameter server that sends the model or parameters to collaborator or also send the instruction to collaborator for the training, for the federated training. Um, so uh, there are different uh, personas in this uh, OpenFL. Uh, one is called the uh, federated learning, um, uh, federated uh, experiment manager. It will send out the instructions, send out a task to the, uh, the Python API component, and then we'll trigger all the uh, training. Uh, and then a di director management manager usually will uh, set up the infrastructure for a director or the, or the aggregator uh, as the communicate or the, as the coordinator or the of the of the of the of the manage, manage, uh, for 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 the monitoring the the whole training task, and then the collaborator manager will manage one uh, individual uh, colla collaborator uh, for for the training tasks. So director is the coordinator, and the uh, the the the. Uh, the, the collector is the, the collaborator is the, for the, each of the party that participating in the federated learning. Um, so there are many use cases in OpenFL. They are mostly uh, active in the uh, healthcare industry. Uh, so they uh, have federated learning enabled for to detect some cancer uh, boundary from the uh, radio uh, uh, images. Uh, so X-ray images. Um, so they uh, and they can detect the tumor uh, boundary uh, from the the, the X-ray pictures. Um, so they are doing that uh, by using by Intel and uh, and the uh, like the University of Pennsylvania uh, Medical School in there. <coughs> so so with, um, so I just mentioned two of the um, open source uh, um, uh, federal learning projects that are under Linux a, uh, FAI and Data Foundation. Um, so in, in the ecosystem, uh, we think there are different roles or different uh, parties that uh, will involve in this federated learning stuff. So the first one is the actual use of the, so the first one is the, the data sources, a data provider. So suppose an organization, they have data, they want to provide uh, to, to other people for training, uh, maybe become a, a commercial service, um, so they can do it by doing. They can act like uh, data providers to others, and then there's a data consumer. Some other com some company they may need uh, the data uh, for their to 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 for the training uh, to build up their application. They are calling the the data consumers, um, and also there are technology providers that help these two people, uh, two two organizations to uh, connect to each other and have the federated training, uh, uh, also the multi-party computation and so on. Um, they all into the uh, governance of, of the same governance rule, some governance set. Uh, so this is the how this ecosystem will interact with each other. Um, most recently, we do see the need for a problem that in the uh, privacy computing area is called the uh, interoperability between different uh, federated learning frameworks. Uh, the, the the problem is that. Um, Different organizations, different people, they may have solution, different solution for uh, federal learning or, or for the uh, uh, privacy computing uh, uh, solutions, but they cannot talk to each they talk to each other. So when the customer, when a the user, they want to talk to different data provider or or the different uh, users, they have a problem of how can it connect to other other solutions. So here in this diagram, the framework A and framework B. They cannot talk to each other because they are using underlying, different underlying technologies. So the community of faith and other uh, federal learning, we are talking about, uh, we are we are proposing a solution for the increase the interoperability standards of uh, different uh, d uh, heterogeneous uh, frameworks. Uh, so like here, uh, we have the uh, framework A and work with to to work with framework B. Uh, so we need to comply with. Uh, common interoperability standards uh, like the management API, controlling API, and the uh, ML security protocol, and also data plane management, so that they can talk to each other. So we are proposing some of the uh, 
uh, architecture change or common APIs in phase 2.0 uh, to, to aim for the interoperability between different uh, architecture or different, different uh, frameworks. This is underway uh, for, the, for the phase 2.0. So, so last, I want to mention a bit about some of the projects that we help uh, to, to we use or we develop to help uh, manage, uh, help develop the, uh, the, 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 the help manage the federated learning. Uh, the first one is called QFate. Uh, so our, 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 our VMware is one of the contributor of QFate. Uh, we use the cloud native approach to manage the federated learning, uh, either for the instance in the cloud or on-prem. Um, so uh, we support, currently support the Docker Compose and as well as the Kubernetes. Uh, in any cloud environment, uh, either it is public cloud or private cloud. Um, so currently, QFate can operate one of the instance of uh, one of the party uh, for support three different frameworks uh, like Fate, OpenFL uh, I mentioned, and also another a commercial solution called Avata. Uh, it's, a, it's a vendor uh, for the federated learning. Uh, and also un un underneath, we have the QFate to use to leverage the HEM chart. Uh, to deploy on Kubernetes and any, because Kubernetes right now is basically everywhere uh, in public cloud and private cloud. So by using that uh, Helm chart, Helm, Helm chart management, uh, we can deploy Kubernetes. Uh, we can deploy the Fade, OpenFL, or Amata onto different cloud instances uh, using that support the Kubernetes. Uh, in addition to management of one single party or single party of the federated learning, uh, we also have federated lifecycle manager uh, for the uh, management of the, of the whole federations. That means that containing multiple parties. So uh, the idea is that we have a single uh, view of all the uh, parties that participate in the federation, and then we can help them to manage the instances of Faith, OpenFL, uh, so that they can work together uh, in, as, a fun, uh, as a federation. Uh, that's the uh, open source protocol FedLCM. It's currently under FATE. And the last one is called the how we are going to manage the uh, federated learning from uh, operator's view. Uh, basically, uh, if we have multiple uh, uh, sites or multiple data sources from different places, uh, either it's on-prem or they are uh, on the uh, on-prem or, or, or the in different clouds, or then they can always be managed by our federated lifecycle manager here, uh, the FLLCM we just mentioned, uh, using the, we just sent the red, the dot, red dotted line uh, representing the control flow uh, to the underlying platform called QFate uh, for each of the site. Uh, either, and then through the, the user can choose the FATE, OpenFL, or whatever frameworks that are supported uh, by QFate. And then, um, and then the data scientists can use that frameworks to perform the uh, federated training and, 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 and together. So uh, also our life, federated lifecycle manager can also manage the uh, central uh, aggregator as well uh, using this dotted line. So, so the idea is that uh, we using the uh, federated visual learning um, lifecycle manager to perform the management task, a relatively complicated task uh, on, in different clouds and different either on-premise or public cloud. Uh, so that they can have the uh, uh, efficiency managed efficiently and, 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 and securely for the all this, uh, for the any, any enterprise if they have data in different locations. Okay, um, that's mostly for my talk. Um, just see if any question, any question I can help answer here. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. So can you talk a little bit more uh, about the difference in performance between the federated and uh, the regular centralized learning and how you deal with this? Because, you know, homomorphic encryption is uh, not notorious for being slow and you kind oh, of yeah, possible. Yeah. You mean you mean the uh, the actual performance, like the not the accuracy, but the performance, right? So in our experiment that we need to pay the uh, overhead for encryption, as you said, homomorphic encryption is slow. Uh, that, yes, that's right, it's slow. Um, the, we, we test it like 10 times, roughly 10 times to, to 50 times, depending on the situation and algorithm. 
the networking. So that's the, the penalty you will have by gaining the privacy preservation of, of the data. And I would say that in that multitude. Like, and so from an application perspective, I noticed this slide was like 2019. I mean, can you give us an example of maybe, um, like you, you said that there's up to 30 uh, contributors, maybe an example of uh, um, application of this? I'm sorry? Uh, example of uh, application of um, uh, multiple parties basically using this federated learning to uh, train models. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't list that. So, for example, um, in a bank in, in, in China, they are doing the risk management, trying to assess the users, uh, the risk level, whether we want to lend them money or not. So by doing, in order to do, in order to do that, they first using their own banking data, as well as uh, social media data, like Tencent, whatever, for example. They have a large amount of user data that can be used collectively to form a model. So they, by using those data, data set from different organizations, they can improve the accuracy of their prediction like by a few percent uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the training. So in this case, there's like two organizations, but uh, do you have an example of maybe 20 different organizations using this model? Um, so the, the example that I've shown here for OpenFL is, is the one that with the uh, maybe here. This one, you can see all these organizations here. There are many, I would say 30 or 50 something, roughly to that scale. Uh, hospitals around the globe, uh, they are sharing the data of the, the not, not sharing, the, they're collectively training the data, training the, the model, right? So that means that many participants in this uh, setup. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, right. amazing presentation. Okay, thanks. Um, are you familiar with uh, Opaque, the uh, uh, secure enclave based uh, not, not uh, really, data, not data really. sharing from Berkeley? Um, heard of that, but not, not, not quite aware of the detail. Okay, just uh, it, it, it's being offered as a uh, high performance replacement for what would otherwise be handled by homomorphic, homomorphic encryption? Yeah, because all of the all, all the data packing and unpacking is being done in the secure hardware enclave. So, okay, I've run across it, and this is the first really meaningful use case I've seen for that technology. So, I thought you might have heard of it. In okay, the, you're saying opaque is like a replacement or enhancement for the homomorphic encryption, right? Yeah. Like okay. A, like a, like a replacement. Okay. Yeah, we we, we did. Uh, one time I talked to one of the people there, like UC Berkeley, right? Rice, yeah, Rice yeah, Lab. Ian Stewart's lab. Rice Lab or something. Uh, Rice Lab, exactly. Rice Lab, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought one of you that heard about that OPEC thing. Yeah, but I didn't get into detail though. But, but after you talk, tell me that I think very, very, we're interested okay. to, to taking a look, yeah, to think about. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for the suggestions. Thanks. Um, could you go into more detail about the Aggregation. And like Aggregation. The server creating like a, a best model out of the client model results. Okay, uh, let me pull up that slide. Aggregation for like you mean the you mean the process or or, or what? Sorry. Yeah, like the the process or the, if you could. Uh, maybe, maybe this one is better one. So, so the one two three four here. Or so the first one is that we train the model locally. Each of the party they have data right local local data. So each this party one participant one two three. Each of them uh, has their local data. Um, so they will use that to train uh, some algorithm, like for example, LR, decision tree, whatever, they're using locally for the training. At a certain point, um, they pull up the parameter of the model. For example, gradients, uh, the, 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 the cohesion, the efficiency, the all kinds of model. The, not the data itself, but the model, right? The model will be sent. Uh, so the second point, second step, you send the data in an encrypted way so that nobody will know other people's data, not other people's encryption, other people's parameters. So that, and then we, we can have a way using homomorphic encryption or, or, or something similar to aggregate those parameters together to get a, a globally weights uh, so that you and then it will be sent back to different parties. I see. And what are some strategies for like getting the globally best weights from? Because you can take advantage of other people's data because locally, if you train locally, you are only seeing your own data. 
We don't see other people's data. That's why we have federated learning. Okay. Thanks. Is there any like distance limitation between or requirement between the participants and your central? Yeah, yeah I think um, usually we go, there's a few ways of, if, uh, if not locally in, in a network, usually they go to the uh, public network like internet or a VPN or a dedicated line, whatever. So that will affect the eventual performance. Yeah, because the, you know, data, the amount of data divided by your bandwidth, right? So the, the, that's the time you spend on the communication. So, so you don't do this like instantaneously. You might just do it like once. A, yeah, once a for week like. Or no, no, no. Uh, so, so the idea of federating is that we do the training like several epochs, ep epics eventually like ten epics, and then we send the data over once. I'm not doing it every time. That's one of the techniques that federated learning uses is to saving the bandwidth. You don't need to send everything every time. So they were saving, that's the saving coming from. And also it's expensive, as you can see, right? The communication is expensive. Do you have any kind of a persistence built in? Persistence like what, sorry? Yeah, so if, what if the transmit <coughs> got interrupted, and so the, you know, the model on the cloud doesn't have all the updates, the oh, updated yeah, yeah. models. So, so you have to, do, it's like database, you need to roll back. And oh yeah, we need to have some kind of techniques for the consistency, as you said. Uh, in case of some broken link, whatever, there's some kind of waiting or, or just abandon some kind of one round of update, whatever. We do have some kind of that. Uh, right now, we just have the uh, synchronous update. Uh, if everything works out, then it's good. If not, then probably we'll abandon one round, whatever, something like that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so time's up, right? Okay, uh, I think that's all for this session. Uh, thank you for the for your participation. Thank you.